come to declare the message of truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was buried three days and he rose from the grave. Today, Jesus Christ is still bringing men to life. Jesus Christ is the door. He's the only way. The Bible says in Acts that there is no other name that is given, that is found in heaven or on earth by which men can be saved. It's very exclusive because there's only one Son of God. There's only one true sacrifice for all mankind. That the blood of Jesus Christ, it says in the book of Hebrews, that it cleanses man. There's no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. You see, Jesus Christ, he chose to go to the cross. He chose to give himself for you and I, that you might be brought into fellowship with God. For the Bible says clearly that sin brings separation in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were banished from the garden because of sin, because they disobeyed God. And they hid in the garden because they did not want to be around the presence of God. And still today, people are running from God. Still people are trying to hide from God. They're running into the garden of all the sin and all the filth of the world, and they're thinking somehow that God is not going to address it, but let me tell you, friend, that God sees everything at all times. God knows exactly where you're at. He knows your plans, your schemes. And one day there's going to be a judgment. There's going to be a judgment of all people. People throughout all history are going to have to stand before God and give an account for their life. And I want you to be ready. Because the Bible says it is appointed once for man to die and after this is the judgment. There's people that leave this earth at unexpected times. Nobody knows the day or the hour that they're going to step out into eternity. And if you die lost tonight without God, you die lost as a sinner. A person that commits sin, if you're a homosexual, the Bible says no homosexual is going to make it to heaven. You have to repent. If you're a fornicator today, you're having sex outside of marriage, you're not going to make it unless you repent. If you're in adultery today, if you are a liar, a thief, the Bible names all these sins because somehow people think that they can excuse themselves from the sin, but the sin always defines the sinner. The person that practices the sin is synonymous with that sin. You can't just say, well, I'm a good person that just makes a couple bad mistakes or have a few flaws that I'm not proud of. And everybody wants to say, well, I'm just human. That's just what happens. Well, let me tell you, God made a remedy. God made a way of escape. But it's called faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. You see, the grace is there. But many of you walk all over the grace and spit upon it. You misuse it. You abuse the grace of God, thinking that you can live in sin and just flaunt it in God's face in rebellion, and it's not going to work. It's going to end in a horrible destruction of judgment if you continue that way. But I'm here to tell you that if you will rightly look at the word of truth and rightly look at the grace that he's given and the measure of faith that you can believe God, you can too be saved. You can too be delivered. You can too have that freedom from bondages and addictions. You can have victory and freedom. You see, the gospel is not meant to condemn the world. The Bible says Jesus came in the world, not that men would be condemned, but that men would be saved. You see, what I'm preaching today is not a condemnation at all. The condemnation is just this, if you love darkness rather than light. If you like that six-pack, if you like that marijuana joint, if you like that rated R movie, if you like that sin more than you love God, then you're just running to darkness. And there's a condemnation that runs to that because Jesus has already announced that judgment must come. You see, a holy God must bring judgment. Nobody would want to judge in the criminal system that would let people get away with vile crimes that are done, that destroy families and hurt families. People understand justice. Well, God has justice as well. God gave us the Ten Commandments that many people they just think it's something of a relic. They think it's something that just is put in front of a courthouse. And they think that somehow the God's okay if you break it and you have no uh, awareness of it to apply it to your life. But let me tell you, God's word, you will never fade away. It's eternal. And one day.
day, my friends, God's holy word is going to address all of our lives. We're going to be judged according to his book, not according to a sense of morals or a code of ethics, not according to a constitution of any certain country. We're not going to be judged according to philosophies or even just different cultural trends that we adhere to. We're going to be judged by God's word. And I'm here to preach God's word. I'm not here to preach my opinion. I'm preaching a message that's eternal because one day people are going to leave this earth. You don't know when that moment is, but your soul will either go to heaven or will go to hell. And might I tell you that the Bible says wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. It's a very easy path. It's a very uninhibited path. It's a path full of pleasures. It's a path full of unrighteousness. And it's a path filled with darkness. You know, I'm here to make it plain to you because the Bible talks about people will take hold of a covering of lies. They'll make a refuge of lies, the Bible says in Lamentations. But I'm here to try to pull that back to let you know that there are sins. Have another drink. That there are certain mockers and scoffers, as the Bible just clearly declares. They'll just mock it, but one day you'll find out there's a judgment coming for those that are drunkards, those that are liars and thieves, those that are rebels, sexually immoral, those that use profanity and blasphemy and use God's name in vain. I'm here to, to warn you that God's word is clear that salvation is extended to you. But if you choose the side of rebellion, you choose the side to be an enemy of God, it's a terrible ending. It's very dangerous ground to, to think that you are God yourself and you make the rules and you determine what's best and what's relevant. God's word today is still relevant. God's word today is still final. The Bible says you must be born again. Many people have never been born again. There's people under the sound of my voice that you will probably go to church tomorrow, but that church you go to, Christ is not lifted up. God's spirit is not there. The word of truth is not preached. It's become just a social networking. It's become more activity based. It's become something of just people trying to appease guilt. But the Bible says that the house of God should be the place where God's spirit is. And do you know that you are a temple? You're going to be either a temple for evil, a temple for Satan, a temple for the flesh, to live your life, to do whatever you want. You want to go and get drunk. You want to go and get a tattoo. You want to go and abuse your body. You want to go and, and just go here and there. You can do that. You have a free will. But one day, my friend, there is always a consequence. You know, there's a consequence for sin. And if you do a lot of sin, you do a lot of dangerous sin, you can get diseases. You can also get lung cancer. You can get cancer of the liver. You're just poisoning yourself. The devil is, is prescribing you a, a way of destruction and you take it willfully. You know, the devil wants to mark you. He wants to mark his ownership of you. He does that by tattoos. He does that by cigarettes. He does that by alcohol. He does that by the profanity you use. You praise the devil when you use vulgar words. You're giving him allegiance. You're going to choose which side of the fence you're on. You're going to choose if you want to be holy. You want to be an unclean person. You want to be a very vulgar. You want to be a God hater. You can choose that path, but there's going to be a judgment. The Bible says when he has come, speaking of the Holy Ghost, he'll reprove the world of sin, of his righteousness and judgment to come. People don't want to think about judgment. People want to think that they can get by with all kinds of sins and not have to address them. But one day, there's going to be a judgment small and great are going to stand at the great white throne judgment of God Almighty. The earth and the sky will flee away from his face and his word will be finally there to, to minister judgment to the rebel, to the wicked, to those that blaspheme God, to the fornicator, the homosexual, to those that are abusers of mankind, 
to the implacable, unmerciful, to the cruel. We live in a society today that lifts up the wicked. They, they give allegiance to those that practice wickedness. They, they follow influencers that distribute wickedness. How many of you, if you look at TikTok and you, you celebrate people that are unrighteous? How many of you follow celebrities or maybe musicians? And they're devil worshippers. That attracts you. You see, a lot of people are influenced by wickedness today. They want to know the people that make money. They want to know the people that have success or power. And many of these people are known Satanists. Might I tell you today that you are drawn into the net of the enemy? The enemy has blinded you. You're walking in death, and you need to be brought to the life of Christ. Christ is reaching for your wayward soul, your dark soul that is guilty. He wants to cleanse you. If you're having sex outside of marriage, you're in danger of the judgment of a holy God. Might I tell you today that God, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's reaching for you tonight. He wants to bring light into your dark soul. He wants to cleanse that heart that's full of vile, wickedness, perversion, pornography. He wants to cleanse you from that darkened mind that is only set upon the selfish plans of this world. He wants to give you a heart that wants to serve God Almighty and live true and holy. The answer is not in a bottle. The answer is not going to the bar to see who you can hook up with. The answer is not in the next pill that can try to relieve your anxiety or depression. Jesus is your answer today and I'm here to tell you he's reaching for you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you a hope in a future. I'm not here to condemn you, but I am here to preach against sin. Because the people know that there is sin. They don't know that they need to But the problem is today is we have a church filled with people that think they can live in sin, watch rated R movies, smoke cigars, go get a tattoo. They think they can go and have idols and skip out of church whenever they want. They can live their life as they please, but they still think that they're saved. You see, but Jesus says, unless you forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. And the churches are filled with false shepherds, worthless shepherds. They're not going to warn you. They're not going to tell you how to live holy. They're not going to tell you how to be separate of the world. All they care about is not offending people so that they can get more money for the business and their executive staff. So they can build another basketball gym. So they can have another activity. Christ doesn't need activity. Christ doesn't need all kinds of different Praise things. God. Christ doesn't need all these different things of the world. Praise Jesus God. says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. You know, you got churches that have the Super Bowl in the church. You have churches that celebrate homosexuality. And that's why that homosexual spirit is prevalent today, because Romans 1 says that when men change the truth of God into a mind, God gave us up to the judgment of homosexual spirit that is coming just like in the days of Lot, the days of Sodom, that's the time that we're living at, it's the time of the end. As the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. We are living in the last times and God is calling a trumpet call out to you today to turn to Him with all your heart, to surrender your lives completely to Him before the time is up. You see, there was a time when Noah preached. He preached for a hundred years. People heard the word. Some people maybe investigated the ark. Maybe they looked inside and were interested in what was being said. But the only people that were truly saved, there was only eight people. It was his family. The only ones that were escaped the flood and the condemnation, the judgment upon them God, it was any people that were considered righteous. Have you truly made your habitation in the ark of safety in Jesus Christ? Or is it just a profession? Do you say you know Jesus, but deny him by your actions? Do you really love him with all your heart? Or do you only spend 30 minutes in his word a week? Do you only pray to him only when you're over praying over your food? Do you only pray to him when you're just wanting to get something from God? Or do you love to worship and adore him and empty your heart and cast every care upon him? Do you walk in a humbleness? And in a very reverent attitude towards God, that's going to show you something about whether you truly have been born again and whether you have the fruit of righteousness. The Word of God is the final authority. I'm just preaching His Word. 
You know, the messenger that brings the word, they always receive the backlash. They have received it all throughout time. But if someone's going to be a true minister of righteousness, they're going to tell you sometimes things you don't want to hear. You know, today we have Christians that think they can drink alcohol. They think that they can be unwise. The Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and he that is deceived by it is not wise. Today we live in a very unwise society, and people that would profess themselves to be wise, they go to church, oh, they, they read the word, they know the Bible, they go to Bible studies, but you know, today, they're still living loose. They're still going to clubs. They're still going to casinos. They're still going to nightclubs. They're still, you know, reading all kinds of romance novels. They're still watching all kinds of different things on Netflix. They're still using curse words on their jobs. They're people that say, I know Jesus. You see what the problem is today? We have a lukewarm setting. We have a mixture, a tragic mixture. Like in the days of Elijah, the prophets of Baal, they have provided a mixture in that setting. If you're going to come and serve God, then get on the side of the Lord. Don't try to, to, to split the fence. Don't try to have one foot in the world and then try to live for God. You either choose to serve Him fully. 99.9% .9 is not going to work today, ladies and gentlemen. You know, living with a few little minor besetting sins and accepting it is enough to send a person to hell. It's important that you have a full love, a full devotion, full adoration. You know, the Bible says God's holy. He has not changed. That same God, the Bible says that men, you know, they were struck down dead when they touched the ark of God because it's holy. He said, don't do it. You don't think he's the same today? I wouldn't play games with God. If your heart's not right with God, you get on a motorcycle, you get your car. You know, it could be your last time on the earth. You might not make it home. Like the last chance God reaches for your soul before you would split hell wide open after hearing the message of deliverance by Jesus. Don't play games. Surrender immediately. Jesus is calling to you. You know, God's not willing any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I just pray that His word would go forth. I pray that your heart would be convicted and touched. I pray that today that you would just love Him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. You know, it's a good thing. When God begins to deal with your heart and let you know that there's things that need to change because none of us have arrived. Even those that are Christians, even those that just came for a, a night to get some dinner, you know, they didn't do anything wrong. You know, they, they have a heart that wants to seek God and serve God and love God. We're all works in progress if you are a true Christian, if you are Christ-like. That's what Christian means, you know. A Christian isn't just something that you're born into. It's not just something that, you know, I... I've just been in this church since my grandma was there, my, my parents were there. But being a Christian is not turning over another leaf. It's not just accepting church dogma. But being a Christian is life. Can I say that again? It's life. If you don't have life, then you don't have Christ. And I can tell you, life today is not just feasting on the things of the world, being more interested in the stock market than God's Word. Having life is not being more interested in the Olympics in Christ. Having life is not being distracted by the death of the world, but it's actually being infatuated in a passion and a love and a devotion for Jesus. Because when God comes into a life, He makes you a new creature. All things become new and the old is put away. Today, you're living in an old, decayed, rusted life that is just, is just heading towards destruction. You know, that the heart, you know, it needs to be revived. It needs to be resurrected out of that dead state. The Bible says that you're dead in sins and trespasses. You know, you think that when you feel bad, you feel that guilty feeling in your conscience, in your stomach, in your gut. You know that what you're doing is wrong. You know God has pronounced judgment. I'm here to preach the word, that the light of God's word would, would inflame your conscience. God's word would begin to start stirring your heart. And then there would be this conviction that would take place. There would be this overwhelming presence and consciousness of God. Yeah, there would be to start feeling with you and draw you and say, Why don't you just heal? Why don't you just surrender? Why don't you just come to the cross? Why don't you just heal yourself? Your life's a waste. Your life's miserable. You can't stop. Every weekend you get a hangover. Every weekend you 
you're just going further and further down. You're going further into debt. You're going further into drugs. You're going further into issues. Further into pornography. Your marriage is getting worse. Why don't you just yield to God? Why are you still trying to take control of your life and do everything yourself? You know, that's all it takes to go to hell is just do what you want to do. You just run the show. You just take the steering wheel. But if you will yield to God, if you'll just surrender, if you'll be born again and say, God, just take everything. I surrender all. You can make it. It's better to go to heaven. You know, even with missing a hand, the Bible says, than to go to hell fully with your whole body. You think the sacrifice is too great. Oh, no, there's nothing that's more important than trusting Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important. You might think that, you know, going to your dinner tonight or going to get a dessert or going to a show or going to the bar, you might think that is what the, the topic of, this, of the day is. That's the most important thing, but the most important thing is your soul, ladies and gentlemen. Your soul is in trouble. Many of you don't walk with God. I know that. The Bible says all are called, but few are chosen. There's not very many. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to, to life. And few there even find it. Many of you are down in my voice. You're, you're very much bound in sexual addiction. You're bound in sexual immorality. Many of you are having sex outside of marriage and God's judgment is following close behind you. That if you were to die tonight, you would enter that place of the dam where they cry day and night. They cry and cry when they understand that there's no escape from that place that God has prepared for the ungodly. That God has prepared for those that reject the covenant of mercy through Jesus. God is reaching to your heart today. He's reaching to you to repent of the blasphemy using God's name in vain, the profanity, the drunkenness, the lying, the thefts. I could go down the list, God names these things because the heart of man is, is increasingly wicked and deceitful. Just to follow your heart, to do what you think is best, that will lead you to hell, that will lead you to that place that I don't want you to go. I don't want anyone that's why I'm here to warn you and tell you that Jesus Christ is reaching for you. I'd love to talk to you about your soul, tell you the word of God that's able to deliver. He's a wonderful, merciful Savior. He says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. What are you looking to today? What is the answer for, that you are trusting in? Where do you put your confidence? What is your foundation today? Do you say it's Jesus Christ because he's the cornerstone? Are you scared of the word? Do you run from the word? That the light of God's word would shine upon your heart and reveal the deeds that you do? Are you afraid to stand before God one day knowing that you live the life in rebellion and hatred towards God? God in his love and his mercy is still reaching for you. There's time to come to him today. But one day there'll come a day where there'll be no more time for repentance. There'll be no more opportunity to be saved. The, the, the Bible says that the summer is past, the harvest is ended, and many will say, still will not say, where are you at today? You say, well, I'm not where I should be with God. Uh, you know, we have a little deal worked out. We, you know, I grew up in church. I went to vacation Bible school. Oh, hey, my dad was a pastor. Or, hey, I know, I know about what you're talking about. Yeah, but are you obeying? Yeah, are you following it? You know, the devil believes this Bible. You know, as far as he knows what it says, he doesn't believe it. That's why he's going to hell. What's any different than the faith that you proclaim today? If you know Jesus, you're going to love him, you're going to obey him, you're going to keep his word. If you love Jesus, you surrender all your life, you surrender all your being. This is not just some part-time hobby that's followed. I don't just do this because I don't have anything else to do on a Saturday night. I do this because God has called me to preach his word and your soul hangs in the balance. And this might be the last chance on this day, on August 10th, that you would hear the word of God that can save your soul. It's going to be chronicled in the book. The Bible says in Revelation, it says those whose names were not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. And it also says that the books will be opened. The books of what? The books of your life. Every single action, a replay of your whole existence is going to be laid out for all to see. And you'll remember August 10th.
and you just choose to, uh, look what this crazy guy is saying, you're gonna remember this message, either to your eternal destruction or your eternal salvation. It's a very serious thing. It's a very critical thing. Because time's running out, there's some people that I know specifically that have heard this message you have, and they didn't think it was that important, and they're not here today. And some of them died also without God to be in hell forever. It's very urgent that you would consider the condition of your soul. That dark soul would be brought to fellowship with God. That's the problem today. You're dead to God. It's not that you're just a bad person. There's a lot of people that, are, that think they're good. You might do good deeds. You might help people. You might help someone's car when they break down. Or, or maybe you bought someone a meal. Or gave the guy at the, the intersection a few dollars. He probably didn't use it for a, a meal. He probably went to go get more smokes to, to harm himself more, but that's another story. But what I'm trying to tell you is today, you might think you're a good person doing things, but what, what it is, is God didn't die because people are good. He died because people are bad and they're dead. They need a Savior. And if you say that you're good enough, that you can do things fine, you don't need God, you don't need God as a crutch, uh, your finances are okay, you know, you got into school, you're getting good grades, you know, you got your car paid for, you got a new nice new house, and you got all these things, and you can say, well, I don't need God, everything's fine, but let some tragedy come. Let some difficulty arise. Let someone in your family get cancer. Let some difficulty arise when you have a child that gets hooked on drugs and you're looking for any answer and help. Let, let me tell you, Jesus is still the answer. You can go to the counselor, to the therapist, you can go to all the influencers and try to find out answers on YouTube. And let me tell you, you're not going to find anything that's going to bring help. There are some things that can help with counseling, but godly counsel, but the Word of God, but Jesus Christ is the remedy, He's the solution today. He can help you today. He can provide a way of escape. If you have that settled, if you have that anchor of your soul in Jesus, you can weather any storm. You can go through any difficulty. But let me tell you, I don't know how people live without God. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you try to make it without having God clothing you. Knowing you're in right standing that if today you could take your last breath and slip out into eternity. You understand the place of the damned, the place of hell. It's a place where there's no more hope. There's no escape. There's no second chances. The Bible says that that tree falls. So it lies. It's not going to be moved. There's no coming back. There's no let me come back to August 10th. Give me another chance. You know, either you'll kneel before Jesus now or before you'll kneel before him before being cast into that place called hell forever. You know why? Because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, they can mock him all they want. They can make all the movies they want. They can ridicule him. They can use you know, God's name in vain with a curse word repeatedly, and you might laugh at that on your television. You might have thought the, the Olympics mockery and blasphemy was, was interesting and, and artful, but let me tell you, God is going to bring a severe judgment upon this ungodly world. Those that crucified the Lord Jesus, those, the system of the world that says we're better off without the Prince of Peace and the Prince of Life. Let me tell you today, what are you going to do with Jesus? Do you live for him with all your life or trample upon his grace? Do you mock his spirit when he tries to lead you? When he says, no, you cannot drink wine. No, you cannot watch that in God's movie. Do you just disregard what he says because it's not the Lord? Do you just say, oh, that's not open, that's not fine, that, that's just a conviction someone else has? No. That's the conviction of a Christian. That's the conviction of someone that runs God. I'm here to preach to you true born again Christianity. I'm here to preach to you a gospel that is able to save people even out of a religious system that's dead. You know, there's always been dead religion. Look up in the book of Genesis. Look up about Cain. Cain had dead religion. He offered something to God. It wasn't accepted. But Abel offered something, the first of his flock, he offered the best, and he was accepted today. There's always been religion. Maybe you follow the dead Catholic religion, the harlot system. Maybe you follow that system. 
where people worship the Pope. Maybe people follow the Pope as the leader. Let me tell you, there's no purgatory. That's not in the Bible. No, the, the bread and the wine do not become the body of Christ. That's blasphemy. You know, there's all kinds of things that Catholics believe that are opposite of what God's Word says. Because it's all about life in Jesus Christ, His Word. That is the road. That is the path. And if you're outside of the Word of God, then you're in trouble. No, I'm not open-minded outside of God's Word. Open-mindedness is sin outside of God's Word. Because His road is straight. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that will lead to life and be there being blinded. Which road are you on today? Are you one of these people that they can once saved, always saved, that I can live as loose in the world and love the flesh and love sin and be okay? I can have wine, I can watch movies, I can worship sports, I got and I have a fine relationship with Jesus Christ, you're the You do not believe the words of the Bible. You believe another gospel. You believe the false teachings that are prevalent, the prosperity teachings that have deceived so many. But I'm here to bring you back to the place of true Christianity where Jesus Christ delivers and sets free. Where Jesus Christ is the love of the life. The Bible says in Revelation that many had left their first love. They didn't lose it. They knew where it was. Or they didn't care. They wanted to go back and get it. Today, if you left God, if you left His Word, if you left it for your sin, you left it for your religion, you left it for just following and doing good work. I can, I've been to many churches in this town. It's not about Christ. It's not about Him being lifted up. It's not about Him inhabiting that place and delivering people from sin. Sin's never preached again. Sin is never addressed. People are lost. They're indebted. People are bound. People's marriages are being destroyed. People are being destroyed from the inside. The Bible says they're white sepulchers. They try to present a, a facade, but they're being destroyed. They don't have a relationship with God. They don't walk in true holiness. They don't walk separate of the world. They're not led by God's Spirit. But many of the churches in this town, they don't even have church on Sunday night. They don't even have a midweek service. They don't have a prayer meeting. These are the people that call themselves Christian, my friend. People that say, I am a Christian. I am a Christ-like follower. I'm a disciple of Jesus. But they don't follow God's Word. They're not drawing closer to Him. They're drawing closer to the world. They don't want to worship Him based out of convenience. They don't want to submit all their lives to Him because they got other things to do. The schedule's just too busy. The job's more important. The sports schedule's more important. The Boy Scout schedule's more important. People will make all kinds of excuses for what they want to do, when they want to do it. And I can tell you, whatever you spend the most of your free time doing is a good indication of what you love and what you worship, what you're passionate about, and what you find purpose in today. If you find purpose in anything else outside of Christ Jesus, you're on sinking sand. You're on a pathway that is not set up in a holy way. You're set in a, a pathway that's on a decline. It's a path of destruction. You know, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, the Bible says. You can think it looks good. You can think everything lines up. You can think the doors just open and that it's just favor. There's people that follow prosperity. If people think that making money and being rich is a sign of living for God, then that would mean that all these people that are billionaires, famous, somehow they would think they live for God. But you know, the sign of being a Christian, godliness, with contentment is great gain, the Bible says. But many of you don't want to be godly. Being godly requires a separation and a division from the world to come out from among the world to be separate. That means you don't go to the bar anymore. That means you don't go to the dance club. That means you, you turn off the rated R movie. That means that you don't listen to the profanity. You're not entertained with fornication, adultery. You're not looking at pornography, not smoking joints, getting drunk, having Jim Bean, having all the, the liquor and all this stuff to try to numb yourself and try to escape from the things of life. No, the Bible says that you would yield yourself to Jesus and that He would be the remedy, that He would be the one to help you. You might come from a dark path. You might come from a lot of baggage. 
I preach to you today, there's people that have been abused mentally, sexually. There's all kinds of difficulties that have happened, and God is wanting to help you today. The only way, don't hold unforgiveness and bitterness that's going to destroy you. The Bible says if you don't forgive, God can't forgive you. But I'm here to tell you specifically, if you have time, if you have a heart with attentiveness to God's word, you'll listen. If not, you won't care. You'll keep moving. You act like I'm just talking about sports or some other ungodly thing. But if you have attention to God's word, it will stir your heart. Today, many of your hearts are dark, cold. That's why the word of God bounces off like an alligator's uh, eye. That's, that's the way it is today. If you love Jesus, you love his word. If you don't love Jesus, you'll just continue on distracted, confused. You'll continue on with all the other things that you find important. Maybe your love today is some idol. Maybe it is. It's a car. Maybe it's a woman. Maybe it's a child, a grandchild. You need to put anything before God. Jesus says, unless you forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. If you love anything more than me, you're not worthy. Today, do you really love Jesus? But you don't even spend 30 minutes praying every week. You don't have time every day to commune with God. You know, if you did that with a spouse, if you only talk to them 30 minutes a week, people would easily say, you don't love that person. So how can you say that you love God? Well, I love God, things are good with God, but you never talk, you never commune, you never worship. You don't want to go to church, you don't care if God's there. You still live in sin, you still live in, you know, use some profanity because you think you have to do it to do your job. You're still going to have happy hour with the girls or the guys who think that, you know, you're just a good Baptist. No, you're, you're lost. You're not saved. There's no such thing as once saved, always saved, and you live like the devil. You live in sin, town, addicted. God's word doesn't say nothing of that. The Bible says that you must obey him. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. If today you're not in obedience to him, then you don't have faith. If you don't obey him, you don't love him. That's what the Bible says. That's not what I say. I didn't make it up. I'm here to call to your attention your need. You need God. You need deliverance. You're bound in addiction. You're bound in sin. You think you have control. You think you're living free. No, you're not free. You live in a society that's getting progressively worse. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he's destroying many of you. And I'm here to try to intervene and say that Jesus Christ can help. Jesus Christ can bring you abundant life. But what stands in the way is your rebellion, your proudness, your arrogance. What stands in the way is the flesh. Are you willing to surrender all to God? Or do you hate God? The only, the only place to be is either you love God or you hate God. There's no indifference. There's no neutrality. Oh, I believe the words you're saying. You know, I grew up around this. I, my grandparents talked to me. And you know, I bet, you know, if there were godly people, their prayers were still coming before God. God sends the preacher out here just to preach the word that you can still be saved. You know, God is still dealing. As long as you have breath, you still have opportunity. But you know, the more you reject, the harder your heart gets. You don't come to God in your own terms. Sin will harden your heart. Sin will make you blind to the fact of the urgency of the need. That if tonight was going to be your last night, do you understand that you would go to hell? after having the opportunity? Do you understand how critical it is that, you know, you're not promised that someone will stay on the right side of the, of the lane. You're not promised that, that you won't wake up in the morning. Maybe there's some genetic heart defect in your, in your family. Maybe there's something that would cause this, cause you to leave this world untimely. Not everybody gets the nine-month warning that they have cancer and that they're going to leave this earth. Some people, the cemeteries are full of people that thought they had one more day and immediately their life is snuffed out. You know, life is a vapor. You might just think it's, I'm trying to scare you. No, I'm not trying to scare you. But the Bible does say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy is understanding. The, the problem is today, I can point, point it right to this, that you don't fear God. If you really feared God, you would fear his word and say, God, I believe in your mercy. I want to run 
immediately to you because I do believe that there is a righteous judgment. I do believe your word that you will judge the ungodly. God, I don't want to be that. If you fear God, you're going to take action and say, God, please help me right now. I don't even want to wait to get to the car. I don't care who's around. I don't care what people think because I want to be right with you, God. Do you fear him? Do you believe his word? Many of you don't. You don't fear his word. You don't care about his word. You're about as uninterested in God's holy word as reading the, the encyclopedia. You hear about as uninterested today in the way of salvation and how to be holy and be born again. You'd rather read just some catalog for, for cool parts. Let me tell you today, I'm here to tell you of a message of salvation and deliverance that you can be set free. Today you're bound. You're bound in pornography. You're bound in unforgiveness. You're bound in bitterness. You think you have the right to hold on to grudges. Those things are going to destroy your life. Those things are, are, are making you someone that is just decayed spiritually. My friend, Jesus Christ is the remedy. He died for us when we could not save ourselves. Those that need a Savior cannot save themselves. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If you're living in fornication today and you're having sex outside of marriage, I'm warning you. You need to repent. God's judgment is falling close behind. Marriage is honorable and all. And the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's a warning from God Almighty. To come to Him, to be honest. To surrender yourself. Don't make excuses. Don't justify. The Bible says, Come and reason. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And that's the message today. It's a very reasonable thing to say, God, you're right. God, I'm wrong. God, you extend mercy to me. God, I want it. God, I want to live for you. I'm tired of being a rebel. I'm tired of being uh, an enemy to you, God. You think you're going to overthrow God? You think you're going to have somehow bribe God at the judgment seat? You think somehow that he's going to understand your, your puny excuse of why you couldn't surrender to him? Why you blasphemed and why you flaunted your sin in God's face? You think that somehow people are going to get the judgment and make a deal with God at the last second? No, it's not going to happen. That's why you have to get right right now. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You say, well, I don't have time. Maybe tomorrow. What if you die tonight? You know, you think you can just choose when to come to God like you're just going to the store. No, you don't choose. It's God's goodness that draws a man to repentance. And when you reject him, when you push him away, when you callous your heart, you harden your heart, God might not knock, knock on the door again. That might be your last opportunity. That might be your first call. You would leave this earth in a moment to be lost and damned forever in that place where the Bible says those made for the devil and his angels. Will you choose to go to that place? Will you trust in the confines of money? Will you trust in just the worldly material things? If your trust, if your confidence, if your security is in anything of this world, then you're an insecure person. Because any of those things can be taken. Anything can happen. I'm here to draw you to Christ. He would be your focus. He would be your love, your attention. You can put things out of priority. You can love a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, a child, a grandkid. You can love any of those things that you should love. You can love them more than God. You can get things out of order, your priorities. You can do things with very selfish motives. Because that's what the flesh does. That's what your old nature wants to do. That's why you have to be redeemed. That's why you have to be born again. Because there's none that do it good. No, not one. You know, your best. The best work that you can do. Why do you do this? You do it because it makes you feel good. You give gifts at Christmas to an easy family because it makes you feel good. You know, it's good to do good at people. But let me tell you, God is looking at every motive, and those things aren't going to save you. Good work is not going to tip the scale in your favor. Jesus Christ didn't die because you were just 
have more good works than bad works in your life? But how many evil thoughts do you think? How many times have you slandered people, gossiped about people? How many times have you had lustful thoughts? People want to think that they're so good, but let me tell you, there's none good. Only God, you need to be saved. You need to come to the altar of repentance. You need to say, Jesus, take my life. I pray. Please have your way to me.
Actually, you got it. What? I think bracelet on. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, so you might need to let them, well, they know the code. I know it's too far back to the road. I buy the dog. I don't want to be like, right. outside of where you're supposed to go. Exactly. I'm glad you saw that. Yeah, because that's, uh. Oh, I don't want to get trouble. Yeah, that's, that's getting us all in trouble. Yeah. Anyone else that tried to come another way, they're a liar and a thief. 
God cares about you tonight. He cares about your life. There's so much darkness today, heavy metal music, rock music, so many people in the occult and Satanism, so many people looking for the supernatural, they're looking into astrology and Ouija boards, they're looking into all kinds of seances and spells and witchcraft. Some of you have, have participated in that, maybe out of interest, out of curiosity. Let me tell you today, you're playing with fire. You're playing with something that God has pronounced a judgment on. But today, if you want to come to the life, if you want to come to the true life, it's only in Christ today. So repent of your fornication. Repent of your sexual immorality. Repent of your pornography today. Because those things today, the Bible defines clearly that those are not just sins that are on the sphere of your life. Those are not just some of your little flaws or your little imperfections. Those are gross sins. That is darkness, and that's what you are. That defines you. You are a whoremonger. You are a fornicator. That's what you are, not just something that you just made a mistake. You're a drunkard. That's what you are. And the Bible defines that those that practice such things will not endure eternal life. Those that live in rebellion and pride will not inherit eternal life. Those that drink alcohol, the Bible says, strong drink is racing and he said it's the by is not wise. Are you going to be unwise and go to hell? If you want to be wise, you trust in us. The choice is yours. You can be just another religious person, bound and addicted in the cares of this life, living for the sins of the flesh, rejecting the spirit of God leading you. You can choose that if you want. God gives you that free will. He cares about you. It doesn't change the love of God, but the justice of God also stands short. People don't want to talk about the wrath of God ever. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. But you know what? Today, the goodness of God can lead you to repentance. The goodness of God can bring you to the place to see your need, that you're undone, that you do not have victory, that you're not a spiritual person, that you don't read God's word, you don't fellowship with him. That's why you can have wine with your meal. That's why you can watch rated R movies. That's why you can use profanity. My grandfather was a Christian, my grandmother was a Christian as well. Why do you see the spot where that is? Why don't you see where that is? You know, just because people don't come over and talk to me doesn't mean they don't hear. Yeah. Now, whether they listen, whether they truly right, believe, I, I, that's another story. But that's not my job. Like my job is to declare this word the way. Yeah, I, and I if, if you choose not to believe it, then you can choose whatever you want to do. Yeah. Made you, man, you made me mad. You made me mad. You can hear about you. You to me. It's a very serious thing. I know. That's why I don't talk about it. But if you died today, where would you go? Probably hell. Is that, is that what you want? You can be right tonight if you want. That's why I'm here. I'm here to try to help. Jesus Christ, he is a good shepherd. He looks for the lost sheep. He looks for the wayward soul. He looks for those he looks for the, the heart that is dark. He wants to bring his glorious light into your soul. Because today you're walking in death and unrighteousness. You're walking in the filth of the flesh. Your mind has been perverted. It's been destroyed by the, the schemes of the devil. And you're just trapped in that cage of sin. God wants to set you free. But if you want to choose sin, you want to choose the way of death. You can stay in that cage, you can stay in that, that pit of sin and say this is just life, this is the best that I can expect, no. God can lift out of any kid. I don't care if you're trying to quit smoking and you try to try, God can help you. He can take that from you. I don't care if your problem is you're hooked on pornography, you, you can't get out of it, God can deliver you. 
You know, you make choices every day, and you have to be held accountable to those choices. But the choice of rejecting Jesus Christ and saying, I can live my life and I can make it, and it's just fine. You know, that's just choosing to be a rebel and proud and say, I don't need you, God. I don't care what you did on the cross for me. Yeah, I acknowledge what you did. Yeah, the devil acknowledges that Jesus Christ died too. He's going to hell. It doesn't do any good to say, I, I believe in this, but you don't believe it. You don't obey it. You don't do it. You don't have faith. That's the, that's the issue that I have today. And the Bible has it, is that many people say, I know about God. That's enough. No, it's not. The devil knows about God. He trembles. He's in great fear. But he is not going to be saved. He's not going to be redeemed. Today, God is reaching for you. You can be. The Bible says to preach the gospel to every creature. Every single person. I don't care whether you're a dishwasher. I don't care whether you're a CEO, a hairdresser. Or maybe you work in a nail salon, or maybe you work as a bartender. You deserve to hear God's word that can deliver you and set you free. God knows you, He knows your thoughts, He knows what's going on. And He set me specifically here with a message just for you. He knows exactly where you're from. He knows exactly the mind, the thoughts that run through your mind. He knows there's no use trying to, to conceal it or, or hide from God because His word as a shining light, it can shine in the darkest places. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It says it even pierces even to the very marrow of the bone. It, it, it's that fine and intricate to be able to uncover anything in your life. Today, God is, is reaching. He's calling to you. We live in a dark society today that promotes good for evil and evil for good, bitter water for sweet water. We live in a society that says it's okay to kill babies in the womb. We live in a society that promotes it just as a woman's choice to murder children. We live in a society that justifies many that want to change and mutilate children to make them into another sex. There's so much confusion and darkness in today. How do you look at that today? Do you really care? Does it really matter to you? Do you care that there's so much perversion that they just use profanity all the time on the television? Does that bother you? Does it bother you to see how much adultery and violence, rapes and all kinds of things that are just spewed out of the television in front of you? Does that offend you at all? Are you enjoying that? Are you entertained by that? Are you able to collect that judgment that's coming for those that have pleasure in that? Does that not bring a fear to your heart? You know, the Bible says that there is no fear of God for the wicked. The problem is that if you don't have a fear of God, then you're not going to believe a single word that I'm preaching from His Word. You're not going to treat your soul with any significance if you don't have a fear of God. No, I'm not just trying to scare people. There is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And unfortunately, many of you are on that broad path that's leading to that Christ, place. Everybody. Because if you're living in drunkenness, if you're living in fornication, oh, having sex outside of marriage, you're bound in pornography, you today, you're living under the judgment of God that in a moment, you could slip out into eternity lost without God to go to a devil's hell where you would be tormented day and night, no able to be abandoned at all. It's, it's real today. The hell is real, and I'm here to warn you that God... He wants to, to remove you from that path, to put you on the straight and narrow way. But you can say this is foolish. You can say this is crazy. You can say, well, you know, I go to church. I believe the Bible. But by your very words, you deny them. By the very fruit of your life, you like going to the bar. You like drinking alcohol. You like doing things that are evil. You don't love God. You don't love Jesus. You can go to church every single week, but if you're still just living in fornication, having sex outside of marriage, the Bible says marriage is honorable and all, and it's not undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And that's why God's word today, he's saying repent. He's saying come to the light, that your deeds might be exposed. Are your deeds evil? Do you prefer darkness? Do you love the bar? Do you love all the radar movies? 
Do you love to gossip? Do you love to slander? Do you love to practice unrighteousness? Do you lie? Do you use God's name in vain? Do you use curse words repeatedly? I could just start naming off sin and many people that claim to say I'm a disciple of Jesus, they do those things, they don't feel bad at all. I'm here to specifically call out things for the point because the sin always defines the sinner. The idolater is the person that worships sports more than worship God. They spend more time, they know every statistic, but they don't know one Bible verse. That means they're an idolater. They know every draft list of beer because they're a drunkard. They know everything that's going on in the world because they're a servant of the world. They don't love Jesus. The Bible clearly says that the sin defines the sinner. It's not just some bad mistake. It's not just an imperfection, but that's what you are. That's, that's the condition of your heart. Either you're a fornicator, an adulterer, a homosexual, in a sexual immoral. You're, maybe you're proud. You're implacable. You're unmerciful. You're covetous. Maybe you're someone that's cruel. You know, there's a, there's a long list of things that define many people's hearts. Uh, it's very dark to God. It's very hard to God. Challenge to God. Hey, would you soften your heart? Would you humble yourself to God? Or do you want to stand before Him proud as a peacock at rebellion and the judgment one day to be cast into hell? What's your choice? You choose. Now before Him today, Die before before being cast into hell forever. Time's running out. I want you to be right with God. I want you to trust in Him. To be born again. He's reaching for you today. Either you'll remember August 10th to your eternal destruction or eternal salvation. It's going to be up to you. But the echo of truth will ring out through all eternity. Hell is a place that's real. You're going to have a body. You're not going to be some floating spirit. Now you'll feel pain. You'll have thirst. You'll have hunger. But let me tell you today, won't you choose to be a part of the body of Christ? Won't you choose to say, Lord, I want to be on the side of righteousness. I don't want to be with the revelers, the party goers, those that practice unrighteousness, the crowd of the wicked. Today, you're a part of the crowd of the wicked. Today, you're living in ungodliness. You find comfort and join hands with the wicked. But today, you can know peace and truth and life in Jesus. Time's running out. Every single person thinks, oh, I got one more day. I can make that choice tomorrow when things in my life get better. People will hold on to sin as long as they want, but let me tell you, when your eyes close in death, if it's an untimely thing, you don't have time to get right. You have to be right right now. You gotta be ready. Amen. I appreciate the message. Point it that way, go somewhere yeah, else. You live, you live in a commercial zone, man. You live in a commercial zone where the, 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 the band is blaring at you. It's only going to get worse. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I don't come out here every single day, but the time I come out here to preach the gospel, obviously, you can be too. Yeah, I understand. So I would rather, honestly, even for another 15 minutes, I would not say that. You got that? You're right. You got 15 minutes? Yeah, I have to go home. Okay. But, 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 but I'm, I'm not doing things to, to, to meet your dream. It's just noise. Uh, 
Um, What's well, preaching? It's truth. Yeah. Well, so it's just noise and right? Well, they need to be saved too. Yeah. And it's maintained 24 hours. I would probably go to a separate little family that would go into the country town where there's a bunch of Mars. I live here and this is where I live. Okay, that's what I like. Say! Like that throws a bunch of glass. Like someone fucking hit me. You know someone was hitting me at the bus like that? Today is the day of salvation. The devil doesn't want you to hear this message because he hates it. God wants to save you and deliver you today. In a different direction. God wants to bring deliverance today. You must be born again. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might not come. That's the middle of it. You know that? Destroying property. You know, you need to be saved, you need to be delivered, you need to not hate God. Hating God is not going to help you at all. Being a false professor and saying you love Jesus but hating his word, those things don't add up, that's a contradiction today. And today, I'm, I'm not here to be deterred by people's opinions and philosophies when the bars can blare music and people aren't offended, but because the preaching of the word of truth goes out, people get mad. What's wrong with that picture today that people just cannot stand the truth? They cannot stand the word of God. But today, Jesus Christ, he's reaching for you today. Jesus Christ today, he wants to bring you victory. He wants to bring you hope today. And I care about your soul today that you would have peace and joy in Jesus. That you would step into eternal life in Jesus Christ. The message of the truth has not changed at all. God is still looking for the wayward soul. He's still looking for the hard heart. It still is appointed once for man to die and after this to judgment. And Jesus Christ today, he sees everything. Nothing is hid from God. His eternal gaze is fixed upon you today. But God will judge the world in righteousness. God will judge the sinners and the ungodly. God will, will judge the hypocrite. He'll judge the blasphemer. He'll judge those who trade good for, for evil and bitter for sweet. The Bible says, be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Many of you are being conformed to the world. You're being patterned after the world. You're being shaped into its mold. Because if you love the world, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know, the love of God, it will cover a multitude of evils. You can forgive people. You can reach out to people that are that are not nice. You can care about people's souls that despitefully use you and take advantage. God is able to do something in the life that is completely unnatural. Because living Christianity is, is not about following rules. It's about having life in Jesus, being risen from the dead into new life that you are able to, to see things clearly. You have wisdom, you have discernment. You're able to apply understanding to the path that you're on. You can avoid the things of darkness to, to flee from unrighteousness and be free. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But in Christ Jesus, you can have life. You can have abundant life today. You know, today, Jesus Christ, he's not willing any perish. This might be the last opportunity that many of you have. Many times people have heard the word of truth, they've heard God's word, but today their heart is far from Him. You might honor God with your lips, 
you might puff on a cigarette and say, I love Jesus. You're just deceiving yourself. You're just lying to yourself. You're playing some dangerous game with God. When you think you can just tip a beer and, and drink and say that you love God, you're just deceiving yourself. You're just setting yourself up for a horrible judgment when God's word clearly declares this. This is the way. That the ungodly shall not inherit eternal life. They shall not be saved. They shall not be delivered. My friend, today, won't you come to the light of Scripture? Won't you come to the Word of God and say, Lord, I'm going to take sides with your Word rather than my opinions, my beliefs, philosophies. Many of you believe everything you read on the news. Many of you put your trust in all kinds of different things of some influencer, but you don't trust God's Word. You don't think that it applies. Position yourself as God. If you're just the one that's dictating morality or what's acceptable, why live in a society that says it's okay to murder babies? It's acceptable. No, it's not. You live in a society today that you know you can divorce, remarry, divorce, remarry, divorce, remarry, and I think it's okay. No, it's not. It's adultery. There's all kinds of different definitions today that people give, but yet God's word still today is is speaking the same thing. In a world filled with change and shifting, if today you are on the rock of Jesus Christ, that you're on a stable foundation, but if today you're trusting in yourself, you're trusting in wickedness, you're living a life, the moral, you're not trusting in Jesus, you're, you're in the flesh. The flesh cannot please God, the flesh is opposite to God, and you need to be brought into right fellowship with God. God's reaching for you today. Many of you have a knowledge about God. You grew up in religion. You've heard about the truth, but you've never been born again. You're still living in fornication. Having sex outside of marriage. And you're in danger of hell eternal if you don't repent. There's many of you out there in pornography and if you die lost with that lustful heart bound and addicted. The Bible says that the sexual immoral, those that are bound and addicted into perversion, that love and make a lie, the abominable and the filthy, will not enter in. That's why I'm here to warn and tell you that today you can know Jesus Christ. Jesus does care about you. Jesus does understand what you've went through in your life. He's a merciful God. He is. He hates sin because sin is what separates because of sin, he went to the cross. He suffered and he died. He went through incredible agony upon the cross and he rose again on the third day and triumphed over death, held the grave, he's victorious. And he's reaching for you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to change you. He wants to give you that peace and hope and a future. He wants you, you to have a good family one day. He wants you to have, you know, blessings in life. He doesn't want you to, to fall into the pit of sin and despair. He, he wants you to have a good husband or a good wife. He wants you to have a good family. He wants those things that he created to be in design of what he wants. You know, the devil also has a design. He has a plan. And many people, they, they can't discern the difference. They don't understand that they're on the devil's path. They're just walking in the flesh and following culture, trends, and they're deceived. Many of you are blind today. Because only the light of the God's word can open your eyes to understand of what your true purpose is, of why you're here. It's for God. It's to live for Him. It's to be a vessel for Him. It's to be born again, to be saved, to be full of life, joy, peace, and hope. It's to be victorious. It's to be a vessel that you would fellowship with Him and walk with Him and enjoy His presence forever and also to try to reach for others that they might be brought into fellowship and know God, that they too would not be walking in death and destruction without any hope. But today, if you want to know Jesus Christ, I'd love to talk to you. I'm about ready to leave, about ready to go. I don't just come out on a Saturday night here because I don't have anything else to do. 
And I come out here for the reason because I do care about people. God called me to preach and declare. Declare his word that's true. You say, well, I don't care. You're in the wrong place. Nobody's listening. You can say all that you want, but the truth of the matter is, is that people do hear. People do hear the word, and either they choose to reject God's word, or they choose to uh, accept his word. Have you been born again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I was driving by, I heard you preach, and I was like, yep, that's what I like to hear. I love to hear it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, every day, every day. Carry that cross every day. Yes, sir. Some people tell me that, and then they go to the bar and they like, oh. You know, we're just getting pineapple juice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You go, you meet friends, you go talk to them about Jesus, drink pineapple juice. That's what I do. The problem is most people that don't know what you're doing, they probably didn't drink a good drink. That's true. I'm going to tell you, Dave, you can't can't win it by being like it and trying to... You can reach something out here like I do. I don't have that to go with it. Sure. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The Bible says we have to be separate of the world. Come out from among the world to be separate. That means that we're, we're different. We don't look like the world, act like the world, dress like the world. We don't talk like the world. If you're a Christian, you're Christ-like, you're a disciple of Jesus, you say, well, I'm not going to fit in. People are going to make fun of me. But you know what? They made fun of Jesus. They scorned him. He didn't fit in the world. And today, if you're a Christian, you're not going to fit in this society. You're going to be a different person, a peculiar person. You know why? Because either you're salt and light, or you're just someone that is in the pattern of the world. You're just accepted in the, in the world system. But if you want to be a true follower of Jesus, you got to lift up the banner of Jesus high. you got to lift up the cross of Jesus that people might be drawn to him to be saved. And you got to point others to him that he has the answer for them. He has the key, deliverance, the hope. Time's running out, Revelation. Party door, sinner, time turning out. Drunkard, blasphemer, you know, all those different sins, they define people, define. They're not just something that is something people practice or it's just something that's a, an attribute of them. No, it's, it's who you are. If you're a blasphemer, if you're a if you're a lustful person in pornography, if, if you're an adulterer, if you're a fornicator, that's what you are. Adulterer! And it's nothing to be proud of because no I'm one's going to be raising their fist at the judgment of God and celebrating. They're going to be in horrible dread and fear because the reality is the souls will go to hell because of this proud love of sin and this scornful laughter and mocking. When God has provided a way of escape, you provide a way that you can have victory and freedom and love and Christ. But today, many people, they disregard the message. They say, I, I, you know, I believe what you're saying, but they don't want to practice it. I know about this message, but I know I'm not living where I'm doing. My friend, the, the seriousness of this, if you die lost without God tonight, you will go to hell. This might be the last chance you have. This might be the prayers of a grandmother or a a relative that prayed for you that God would bring his word before you just one more time before your hard heart that you would just say God please have mercy God I'm tired of trying to take care of things myself God I'm tired of running from you living in rebellion and wick wickedness God's reaching for you today you better you better listen you better stop pushing them away because time's running out repent repent Repentance is a good word today. Repent. That means to turn. Turn away from the things of the world. Turn away from the flesh and turn to Jesus. Trust in Jesus Christ today. You must be born again. That's what people need to do. They need to be born again. If people are really born again, they're not going to be going to the bar. They're not going to be going and trying to meet up with someone for the weekend. 
not hopping from bed to bed in sexual morality, not from the use of profanity. People just need to be born again. They need to be delivered and set free, especially from their false profession, especially from their religious affiliation that doesn't do anything for the fellowship of their soul with God. Turn to Jesus Christ tonight while you still have time.